Welcome everyone to the MMOs.com podcast. This is episode 55 now, and this is Altai, joined by... Omer. Gumball. Matt. Oh, that's it. That's Shirley it this week. Yeah, this week. Shu is still gone. Shu is uh, in Alaska. ice fishing. Ice yeah, fishing. In Alaska. Wrestling polar bears. Are they polar bears in Alaska or am I retarded? Yes. There are. In yes, they're retarded or yes, there are polar bears? No, there's polar bears. Uh, there's villages on the outskirts and they have to have a guy that watches out for polar bears. So that I'm not sure if you're trolling me or you give me the real answer. I'm almost positive I'm not trolling you. I'm there are definitely sure polar there bears. There are many in Alaska. polar bears and they infringe on civilization all the time. Can you so can you mount face. said polar bears as a polar uh, bear? I know they'll rip you in half. Polar bears. But you, but you can mount them in WoW, and WoW is a documentary of your life, so. You can also mount them in Riders of Icarus and play a little mini game. Polar bears. Uh, speaking Real of Icarus, uh, we did that for Sunday Funday, and I guess we can talk about it after the weekly raid. The weekly raid. <laughs> That's you, Gumball. favorite thing ever. So this week, I've decided to ask a question that I'm sure many people have talked about, and it's just very simple. What is your favorite game? Uh, it doesn't have to be an MMO. I think most people have a game or a few games that they think about or they, you know, they cherished as new experience. And I think whatever our favorite game is, it kind of defines you as a player and what you end up finding out about. So mine is a bit of an odd choice. Mine's not an MMO. My favorite game of all time is Ape Escape. Uh, I actually don't know many people who played Ape Escape, but it was the first game to use uh, analog sticks, the dual analog controller and DualShock. And it's actually the only game I've ever played that really utilized it completely because you had to like you had to spin the analog to use certain gadgets and stuff. And you would run around, basically the whole premise of the game was you would run around with a lightsaber and a net and a few gadgets and you would smash these renegade monkeys over the face and you would catch them. And it was amazing. I loved Ape Escape. Definitely my favorite game of all time. This uh, is your favorite game of all time. Yes. Yes. This is my favorite game of all time. Uh, I had I so much fun. I actually beat Gummy, this game. You're being judged right now oh, by everyone here. Okay. This game, if you played it, every if you played Ape Escape, you know it was a shit. And the comments are pretty much reinforcing that. Uh, Sean, I still think it's the, the only hold on, It's better. the only game I played, and I got 100%. I collected all the freaking coins. I beat the mini games. I beat the secret boss. Loved it. And then I went and I did it all again. So, But Gumby, those apes, it. they want to escape. and you, they, they try to go to freedom and you just capture them as they, slaves. Okay, the problem was is that the apes were messing with history. And I, no, I don't think this is nostalgia. I played it recently. I just think... Uh, and maybe, I guess it is, of course. It is it's 100% nostalgia. nostalgia. Dude, I feel bad for your childhood. Like, I was playing Banjo-Kazooie, you know, Donkey Kong... 64 even or... bad for my said, yes. This game looks game. like it, this game looks like a bad ripoff of like Banjo Kazooie. This game it is, is not. Near it a is not. No. See, oh I God. played the second and third one, and he, he's right. They're really fun. I mean, I I, I'm not saying they can't actually. be fun, right? But it just looks like a bad Banjo Kazooie. I think you just like the hate. But anyway, what is, what is everyone else's favorite game? And I get, and uh, also let us know in the comments. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna take this because ironically. I think the game that probably classifies as my favorite based on how many times I've played it over and over is Banjo Tooie. Whoa, wow, I never played see? that one. We, I played Banjo Kazooie a shit ton, but not Tooie. I played Banjo Tooie. I, I still do like every three years or so. So. It's is it better than ben, the first one? Yes, it is so much better. It has so much more character. Uh, it's funnier. Characters are better. Hmm. It's more charming. Yep. To quote our Overwatch criticisms. When we played Banjo Kazooie a lot, we always like Altai and I always wanted to play Banjo Tooie, right? So this was back when S C Four was really big. Obviously, we go to the, we go to the Toys R Us where we buy our games, and for some reason Banjo Tooie was always sold out. I would always because it's go so to, like, damn good. Once a week we'd make the pilgrimage to, to Toys R Us, which was pretty far away from us, to see if they had this game. They never did because we played Banjo Kazooie so much and we loved it, and we heard such great things about Banjo Tooie, but we never got to play it when we were younger. So I might download the, the emulator just, uh... and just play it. Okay, so this has so much detail in it, basically, that, like, there's this, for a platformer, mind, it's not like an RPG level of detail, but, like, I will never forget the fact that the fast travel method is a train, right? And to unlock the train, you have to take out a boss that is basically a coal golem. <laughs> and, do you, and do you use his tears as fuel for your train? No, but he's he, he like, runs the fuel room or whatever. Oh. He's a character that recurs after that. But that causes global warming. Come on, Matt. Coal is a very dangerous fossil fuel. All right, all right. My turn, my turn. All right, mine is also not an MMORPG, but at least it's like a PC online game. And that is StarCraft. StarCraft 1 is my favorite game of all time. And uh, one of the reasons, I mean, the, I guess there's a lot of reasons, but 
the campaign was good, right? The story was good. The campaign was good. Sure. The the online you know play was obviously really good. It was like one of the first big competitive games, and more most importantly for me, the custom games. Uh, the custom games were amazing. Uh, a lot of genres actually got their start on StarCraft. I don't know if everyone knows that, but for example, uh, Dota, uh, it was actually uh, based on a game called Aeon of Strife, which was a custom game for StarCraft One. Actually, interestingly. <laughs> Uh, tower defenses got their start on StarCraft, I think. Not necessarily, but they got popularized. Though. They got pop. Okay, yes, there was a, there was a wide variety way before War Three. People were playing uh, tower defenses on StarCraft One, and it really got the ball rolling on a lot of stuff. I so, think that tells you the power of a game where you can it has a built-in game creator, because even if the games like Roblox today, where people are given the freedom to make their own things, and I think it, it really unleashes creativity because you did see a lot of genres in StarCraft. What we what is the biggest genre in PC gaming today of MOBAs got started on StarCraft One, which is an RTS, and it's, maybe that's one of the reasons why games like Minecraft and Roblox did well. I mean, let players unleash their creativity. Do we yep. see a lot of that anymore? I know uh, in Dota Two, you have custom games again now, but are they still popular? Um, to the wayside? they're not. They're not as big as War Three or StarCraft, and I think the reason why is the RTS genre is just lends itself to more assets. That can be right. used in the custom maps. You know what I'm saying? Like in Dota, uh, you you associate the characters with specific, uh, you know, characters or flavors. But whereas in StarCraft, a Marine is just a soldier. It's not like, you know, a specific soldier. Like if you see a Juggernaut running around in Dota, you can't you can't visualize it as something anything but what it is. But a Marine is just a Marine. It could be like a, you know, it could be a soldier in any kind of country or whatever. Mm -hmm. For the record, this guy playing StarCraft in the video isn't very good. He dropped his. He like took three seconds to build a command center. I had to move his units twice. <laughs> I just. I'm just picking a gameplay video. Yeah, All right, yeah, right. Omar, what's your favorite game? Uh, I gotta you know? jump in. I'm gonna say an MMORPG because obviously my brother and I share a lot of similar tastes. I played StarCraft one to death because we'd always play together online, but we also play another game to death, which I would definitely put as my favorite game of all time, and that would be Ultima Online. Uh, no other game has left that kind of mark where you feel invested in the world. I felt like you really were a part of that world. We had so many like fun, like so many memorable moments of whether we were camping houses that were about to, you know, collapse. Because in that game, if you have a house and nobody goes to the house for like a month, the guy quits, the house falls apart, and people can just take all the loot from inside the house. Whatever the guy, everything the guy had, people would compete for those loots. Like it'd be like 50 people camping in the house, and when the house goes down, people start killing each other, getting all the loot. Like we had so many crazy memories of PvP. We had, we had, I had a rival. Like how many games do you have like? A nemesis on all right there was a guy we were like in middle school and like there was a guy i knew on the bus his name was lewin if you're watching this video lewin it'd be very interesting to, to hear you reach out to me but he i knew him in real life i actually introduced him to the game but he became my nemesis in the game we became like we hated each other like i remember one time he killed us in the game right like he just he like he beat us in a duel in like a very scummy way he used a poison weapon and that was very bm like you aren't supposed to in a duel you're not supposed to use a poison weapon because it was just it was a cheap shot right and we lost and my brother and i were on the same computer because we only had one computer at the time so he kills us and we're, we're so frustrated we look at each other right because we were we were on different school buses and lewin was on my school bus all he looks at me and goes punch him in the face as soon as you see him like literally beat the shit out of him right and I'm like, and I'm like i got this you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna whoop this kid right <laughs> the rage is going through the computer into like real life and like obviously i calmed down the next day but we gave each other the death stare on the bus. Like we would not even talk to each other. We became arch enemies for like three years, and like it created conflicts. It was really fun. Like it really made me invest in the world. There's so many experiences I had in Ultima Online that just I can't. <laughs> I have not replicated in other MRPGs. Probably because a lot of the physics as well, like the mechanics of the game. You have your own persistent world housing. Like even games today, they don't have persistent world housing that's useful the way Ultima does. Honestly, a lot of the features in Ultima, like. Was, or like what Chronicles of Illyria talked about, which makes me excited about Chronicles of Illyria because of those features. But I, we haven't seen it yet in any other game since then. So I, I can gush about Ultima, drop stories forever, but I'll, I'll cut it off there. It's definitely my favorite MRPG. And for, just number-wise, played it for at least like six, seven years. And we come back every once in a while playing private servers, but I'd say comfortably five years straight we played it. So I, I have, a, I have a, there's a familiar motif here in all of our stories, and these are games we played uh, in our youth. Okay, yes. so that's what I was about to say. So I, I chose Banjo Tooie based on how many times I play it, right? But somebody was harassing us in chat because they're all bathed in nostalgia or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pick a second al alternative equal 
modern one that I haven't had time to replay so many times, and that's Witcher 3. Witcher 3 is fucking awesome. It has changed mm -hmm. the face of RPGs for me probably forever. Wow. Because really? It just, that's a bold uh, statement. It, um, it, it's hard to describe without playing it, but it makes it feel like everything in the game matters. Like, every character matters. Mm -hmm. All these side quests that you're doing, they're full-blown stories. It's not just some dumb little side quest. Everything you do is like a whole story in and of itself. And I have never seen an RPG do that. Hmm. I heard great things, but I haven't played it yet. So with yeah. your you're missing out. You right. are missing out. <laughs> it's a single player game, though, right? Yeah. That's... So, right, so it was like Dragon Age. You love Dragon Age, more. So I, I absolutely love Dragon Age. That was a good I like game. A lot of single player I'm games. Sure Age. We're gonna pick recent games, and I also I don't see an issue with anything being bathed in nostalgia. Uh, but if I had to pick something recent in the last couple of years, the game I probably dedicate the most time to is Natural Selection too. I gotta be the hipster, I guess, but I, I really love NS2. Uh, it's it's kind of dead now because you just don't have the same community. But when the community was booming, uh, I had a ton of fun, and I I, actually, I even made friends through that game. I make a, friends through a game. Normally, it's a good indicator that uh, yeah. it was a pretty solid title. So I, I enjoyed that more than anything else. That's a good that's a good indicator, actually. I didn't think of that. Like you mm. know, the, the the friends you make online that stick with you, uh, you know, usually in those games that. Uh, or more involved, yeah. Or at least get you more invested in the game. Like, Actually, we, we, we can... Go ahead. In NS2, I had made friends with. Uh, we had tried to go competitive, and competitive NS2 is, is insanely hard. So we were getting stomped all the time. So we decided to to give up and make a Rust server. So then I knew we were we were bonded, and I still hear from them from time to time. That's good. But good times. Okay, we 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 can gush about our favorite games forever, but let's uh, jump forward. Oh, I want to say, or anyone like we played, we did play Riders of Icarus yesterday. Well, not yesterday, it was Sunday, and uh, that I think got me we thinking. Enough about this. <laughs> we we, we okay. to talk specifically about Riders of Icarus, but playing that actually made me give me an itch to play another MMORPG again because I think most MO gamers, most people that play most, they go through cycles. I mean, a lot of people get jaded and they kind of don't play anything for a while. And they just kind of observe the genre, and then you go back to playing something, and then you have like you take like six months off, and then you get back to something. I got the itch. I mean, it wasn't because of Riders of Icarus, because I, I had complaints about Riders of Icarus that kind of nagged me as a, as a berserker, like the action combat, but that's, I mentioned in the, the Sunday Fun Day. But right. they gave me an itch. So I downloaded two games. I downloaded Blade and Soul and Aeon. I'm going to play one of them wow. and see if I can get back into one of them. Uh, probably, uh, I mean, Aeon, I really, I played Blade and Soul a lot more than Aeon. I barely played Aeon, so I might give Aeon a try instead and see how far How about I can get. you just hold your breath for a month and join me in Riders of Icarus? Okay, I, I was actually going to play Rise of Vickers only because it's still a new game. And people are already saying it flopped in the chat, but that's not a fair wow. That's not fair to say because as Altai pointed out in the Sunday Funday video, the game is doing quite well in Korea. It's number three or four on the most played <laughs> MMORPG list. Yep, it so. jumps between three and four, most popular MMORPG in Korea, which is its home market, uh, behind Lineage, Maple Story, and that's it. It's number three right now. So it, you can't say it failed yet. I mean, it might not have captivated a huge American audience right away in the closed beta. But it's already outdoing like so many games in Korea. Like it's outdoing uh, Blade and Soul. It's outdoing Terra. It's do outdoing all these games, and that's a very, Black very, Desert. very competitive market. It's outdoing uh, Black Desert as well. Cheers, I'm Savior. Like, uh, Ninety percent sure it's gonna do well. Mm -hmm. I'm just not gonna be playing it. So all they showing off the list right now. So there it is, boys. Icarus, my game. My mind is blown. Dave. If you look at all that, all because list. of a bet. Riders <laughs> of Altai. Next month, I'm going to be streaming myself, get to level 50 in this game, so I can win five bucks from uh, Mr. Gumble, Matt, and Remo. On Wait, Sunday fun day, we made a bet that I could not get to level 50. And what was it? What was that time frame? Like a month? A week. Oh, it was not a week. I did not agree to a it week. It was a week. It was a week. There's, I'm going to rewatch. There's no way I agreed no, to a week. I don't week. think it was a week. I don't think it was a week either, month. but you know what? I agree to a week. week. <laughs> Only because it makes his bet harder. There's no way it was one week. It was a week. All right, I got to I got to right. make it like two days. Remember? And what's remarkable is you see Hero Online on that list. It's one. It's the eighth most popular MRPG in South Korea, and I'm, that's mind blowing. Like other games there, I can see, but Hero Online, I did not know it was that popular because they have that game in America through a net game, and it's, it's something else. There it's it something is. else. It's unbelievably generic, but for whatever reason, it's doing okay. Well, at the same time, what else is out there? Tree of Savior is, have, has been having a struggle. Blade and Soul's kind of, you know, it's had its time. 
you know, that, that initial novelty is kind of worn off. So Blade and Soul is still number five in uh, and actually Blade and Soul got a huge boost in NC Soft earnings as as I think Matt reported. Wow, because it was free to play in uh, in America, so the numbers went quite high for that. Do you think when a new free to play title comes out, other free to play titles see a big drop off? Uh, if it's if it's a huge title, yes, hundred percent. All right, mm. I have a. I have a podcast challenge for the crew. Ready? Wow. All right. Let's try to figure out what number 10 on this list is. Not Future War Online. That's got to be a bad translation. I, how can a game be called Not Future War Online? Like, <laughs> there's a game called, called Future War Online, and this is not that. <laughs> it's not that. It could be anything else. So this is the homepage. Uh, here it says Easy Era Zero. And I still don't know what this is. I think if you Google Knox Entertainment, you'll find it. A company that actually makes it. Because uh, that is definitely a bad translation. Because I, I I've done a lot of research for Chinese games, and the translations are always hilarious. It's like human resource configuration was one of the translations for a game. I was Somebody asked what this Japanese list was. Game today. And I'm, uh, and, uh, all right. No, you guys were going on about bad translations. So I, I looked at a Japanese game today, and Google translated it to Yo, sarcasm dreamer. <laughs> Yo, sar Yo, sarcasm dreamer. I like it. If somebody asked what this list was, and once again, this is the top MMORPGs in Korea. Uh, not necessarily top games. Top game. Is, I mean, League is still the top one. game overall in Korea right now. Wow, League. Oh, League of Legends, though. 100%. League of Legends, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. and, then, like, and you can see on this well, chart. Uh, Maple Story or Lineage? No, the, 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 the number on the right is the ranking for MMORPG, and the number on the left here is... it's overall ranking of all games in Korea. Mm. So you do have both. You know, it's pretty crazy too. Like despite, I, I think we talked about this earlier, but you know, uh, Twin Saga you know, was announced from area earlier, but despite the game being, because because I have my MMO itch and I want to play something, I, I saw the trailer for this. They're like, you know what? I could play Twin Saga if it was out, but it's not out yet. But because this, this company, X Legend, they keep releasing the same kind of game over and over again. And it just, for some reason, I still want to play it. Like it's the same game and it's more polished. Like, it's going to be like Orkin, I feel like, but just looks slightly better. But I still want to play it. Have they been improving gradually over yes. time? They just, you know, they just keep making the same, make the same product again and again, and then just a little bit better. And one day they'll have the perfect game, the perfect anime-themed game. Like it's, they really know. specialize in that, like that art style, and they've been progressively getting better and better. It's very pretty. I'm going to be honest. The moving house thing is really cool. I wish other games would do that. Uh, explain that feature a little bit. They have the Terra Cottages in Twin mm -hmm. Saga, where it's like your house can move. It's like literally a moving house, like Hell's Moving Castle, but you can customize it and everything. Will it be persistent, or will it be like in its own zone? I have no idea yet. Yeah. They didn't say anything about that. I still want to see a game with persistent housing, because, again, that's one of the reasons I love Arc Arc Age. Yeah, but, I mean, people have been... People are giving Arch, Arch, Arch Age a lot of flack for some of the stuff that Tryon did. Still has so. persistent housing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Right, so easy online. Does anyone know what this is yet? Someone send me a gameplay gameplay trailer for this. I'm more of a not future war online kind of gamer. That's what I'm up for. I'm gonna watch that be a game that you call Duke when you finally find out what it is. I mean, it probably <laughs> and is. I'm Duke. gonna make you play it. I will make you play it. Will it ever come out in America though? Come on. Yeah, I mean, I got my MMO H, so I'm gonna play one of those two games right now. I might stream some of it later too. How are you gonna choose which one? I don't know right now. Honestly, I'm leaning towards Blade and Soul, even though it's you know, it the immediate hype is down, but it's the game is still there. You know, every game has that huge burst as soon as it launches. A lot of people already made like these dramatic videos about why they're quitting Blade and Soul. Like you see them on YouTube and the forums, but like those videos do well. I get the oh, hits. someone found the game I was talking about. Nice, thank you, Suedo Hero. It's actually Pseudo Hero. Nice job reading, bro. Pseudo. Wow. I feel like you're intentionally choosing the one that is going to be a uh, less of an investment because you're going to quit sooner because there's nothing to do. Whoa, why do you say that? I feel like honestly I'm I'm I would I'm leaning towards Blade and Soul because the graphics are better. And well, maybe, I mean I haven't seen the end graphics. I don't know why you no. like Blade and Soul. I like the no. art. I, the outfits look so the outfits look so pretty. Blade and Soul looks so awful, I think. It's like one of the worst looking games ever. No. The, the characters look like they almost had a skin tone mixed with mustard yellow, and it looks yeah. awful. I, I like that. I, the outfits are nice. My character is kawaii, you know, super kawaii, all right? When you see my character, A+. No, Blade and Soul sucks. 
<laughs> Plain Soul is one of NCSoft's most successful games, all right, after Lineage. I think it's Lineage, Guild Wars, then Plain Soul right now. Yeah, and by today's standards, Lineage looks pretty bad, too. That's. I'd rather okay, play Lineage 1 than Blade Soul. Blade no, Soul. you wouldn't. Uh, Lineage 1 remind me of Legend of Mirror. Like, let, ah, let it, it isn't nah. a week. Oh, God. Thank you, Oreo Slayer. No. Okay, Oreo Slayer confirmed it. I'll tell you have one week to level up to oh, level man. Up 50 when the game launches. You're my new favorite person. That's going to be pretty hard. I'll, I'll try it, though. I'm joking. Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play some Blade Soul. Maybe stream some later. All right, some news. Gumby, come on, bring us up. So uh, we had talked about this in the pre-show a bit. I think we do need to mention on the recording that Overwatch, which is a game most of us have played, mm -hmm. as most, I mean, three out of four at least, uh, sold over 7 million copies, which is a, is a pretty impressive number. Uh, what did we say that rounded out to? Someone who's About 300 million. Out? About 300 million. 300 million. million. So, so yeah, base game is 40 bucks. The founder edition was 60. So I just assume like 45-ish. Because most people probably didn't buy the Founders back, Founders Edition. No, or you're right. Edition. It probably is. I wonder, is it doing as well on um, console? I would imagine it is. Probably even more, honestly. This is, this really? is the total. This is the total amount. They actually, Blizzard, I mean, the, the, the guy at Blizzard said it was one of the mo their most successful game launches ever. And remember, this is coming wow. from Activision Blizzard. Who owns the Call of Duty franchise? So they're comparing That's it. True. So they've had amazing launches. I mean, Call of Duty has sold 500 plus million a single day before. So this is on par with that, which is remarkable. You know what shocked me? The Division did really well. It also it had over 8 million players, I think, in the first like few days. Yeah. H how I feel is like that? A lot of people quit the Division like pretty quickly. That that game very quickly, I think. Got... Yeah. So bad press, I the division. No, I um, Division. It has the same problem that all of Ubisoft's pseudo MMOs have, and that's that it has content designed to be like a console game, but it's an MMO and like mechanically. So you hit the point where you run out of content, like a normal offline game, and it's just you're done. There's there's like nothing else to do but like PvP, and nobody wants to just PvP forever. If I find how many players are in the division right now, five thousand. That's it. 5, for 000. PC, yep. for PC. PC, yeah, for PC. Yeah. Correct. But if you look at that number earlier, like, Steam oh, as well. It's look just at the a, chart. It's like um the DLC model for like it and the crew and everything yeah. back it up. It's like they're they're not made for longevity. They're just made to have the MMO component as a sort of new paradigm of gameplay for their kind of game. Well, if you want to talk about declining games, I thought uh, we, there's an interesting story floating around multiple media sites declaring that Battleborn is a dead game, that it is, uh, as a, it's a dying, a premature death. Uh, it's on its way out for a number of reasons were cited, uh, including Overwatch's release, uh, confusing gameplay, et cetera, et cetera. And I had a chance to look at the charts just now, and unfortunately for Battleborn, it is now at uh, about 1,200 players. Now, most games, we've talked about this, after 30 days, you have a 20% 20, 20 of your original player base. And there are about 12,000 players here uh, at the all-time peak, which was very early on in the game's release. And you're now down to about 1,200, which is a crazy 10%. drop. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm actually, we all played Battleborn a bit. I reviewed it. I, I did not think it was a terrible game. I also don't think it's, I don't think it's going to die. I think it's going to level out to the hardcore players. But what, what went wrong with Battleborn? Uh, I think some people have cited that it was marketing uh others decided that blizzard released overwatch at the same time as battleborn uh the art style wasn't as likable it wasn't disney and pixar the campaign was kind of lame and <laughs> it didn't really know what it wanted to be is this an fps a team deathmatch fps or is it a moba is it, it, a it is a tr i think a, i think if you look at an fps which is the way i looked at it when, when we were doing this yeah. thing, and i was wrong you can't look at it as a traditional fps because no it's not. Reasons, i i couldn't kill people i'm staying behind somebody shooting him in the head like 18 like 20 times and he's not dying but it's a MOBA, which is that FPS camera angle and controls. All right, here's the issue. I don't issue. think Overwatch had anything to do with it. I think the core problem is that it doesn't let you get other heroes the right way. So you're stuck with whatever hero you might not want to play while you're sitting there trying to get the one that you want to play. It's like they didn't give you an easy enough way to get new heroes. So all that grinding through like PVE and mm -hmm. crap is forced upon you. I think uh, a number of issues. One, it was sixty bucks, not forty, right? Like Overwatch was. Yeah. Two, it was more solidly a MOBA, right? Yeah. 
Yes. And that means everyone is primed uh, in the marketplace to expect MOBAs to be free, whether it's Dota, League, you know, Here's the Storm, Smite. Uh, just the, the MOBA genre is just it's associated the most strongly, I think, with free to play. I don't, I don't think that's really fair, though, because you should say the same of MMOs, and we still have games coming out with buy-to-play and subscription models. Well, no, MMOs have always been both. Also, like, wow. You, you, can, you, know. you can't blame but, the model. But, because they, they sold but so many now, copies. now people are primed for free-to-play. Well, exactly, and I think that's I think subscription is no, a lot harder today because of that. One at a time, boys. All right, Alta, you can't blame the model because, listen, they, stay, they had 12,000 players at launch. So these people all played the game, and then they chose to quit. Well, it was also, again, I think they quit a lot because it was competing directly with Overwatch. We, we discussed this before, and she would agree with me, but not you guys. Yeah. And she's not, she's not here to defend me today, so. No, I'll agree. I agree okay. that definitely competition with Overwatch played some role. But I don't think it can account for the entire thing, like nothing ever can. Uh, I think one of the big issues that wasn't discussed much in the other articles is that this was from 2K Games. And a lot of people have played Borderlands and Borderlands 2. And I think there was some of expectation that at least the campaign, the single player mode, which I remember when we first talked about this game, it was interesting that it even included a single player game when most games have abandoned them all. They want to justify the price. And, and when you played the campaign, it was nothing like Borderlands. It didn't have that same endearing universe. And then the like quirky atmosphere, like the jokes were like saying fucking shit. And that's not, that's not a joke. That's just cursing. It, it, it just, the characters weren't likable like Borderlands as well. There wasn't. I think it's it showed. I think there was a mixed message in the way the game was marketed. When you watch the trailer, you see these characters. They have personality. You think, okay, I'm gonna get involved in this narrative-driven game. It's gonna have a lot of spunk and flair. And then when you actually play it, they're kind of they fall flat. There was, okay, go, ahead. But, uh, go ahead. My my thing just real quick before we leave it behind. You can't say that uh people are primed for free mobas like dota and league and everything and then turn around and say it's directly competing with overwatch it doesn't work like that that's well, fair too but fair it does point. because the when they see it right and they see those creeps and stuff no but it, it doesn't work like that sure it does they're competing with one I don't or the understand other why not either yeah because it's either a MOBA or it's a shooter. It, it's not both. It, it can't. It, it is like, both, though. It is no, both. No, that's not what I mean. It's not <laughs> both in terms of what it's competing with. It's like Paragon isn't competing with shooters, even though it's a MOBA that looks like a shooter when you first see it. The first thing I saw I mean, of it so, had the guy shooting, and I thought it was a shooter at first. I so mean, what you're saying I mean, is that genres only compete within to, with each other? Like, if two titles within the same genre compete with each other, but if they're no, not they, the same they, genre, they, they, right. they, they do compete cross but what I'm saying is you can't say it's competing with Overwatch and then say that the problem with it is it's not free. I, I don't think we're trying to say that, that any single factor is was yeah, the problem. The you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it all comes together in the end. And I want to emphasize the problem that you're going to have with the declining player base. Because I think MOBAs are especially bad for a declining player base. Because remember, they, they get 900 players and around 1,200. Between 900 and 1,500 mm -hmm. if you look at the Steam charts. And the problem is now the people that are still staying with the game Generally, people that have been playing from the beginning, they, they like it, right? So right. these guys are already they're veterans, they're already higher level. So now think of it the new player experience. You've just bought over you, you just bought a Battleborn, you queue up, and you might be like a 15, 20, you might be in a very long queue because the people in the game who are still in the game are veterans that just already keep playing. And even if you find the game, you get matched up with, with veteran players. So you're not gonna have a fun time. I think MOBAs need a steady stream or either a very big audience or a steady stream of new players to come in. For that new player experience to be enjoyable. So wouldn't you say that the free to play model is the one that's gonna cater best yes. to keeping that population? It's it's definitely difficult. You know, if, say I'm someone who judges a game based on how big the player base is, I'm not gonna turn around and now buy something where I see a decline. Uh, maybe you know what? Will will Battleborn go free to play? I don't think I think, so, I, th I, I, think now, it will. I, think I don't it will. think it will everything will go free to play though. And I'm usually right. We say we do ask this question a lot, and I don't wanna stay on it for too long. But, uh, you know, I guess it, there might be a certain point, you know, where you just got to do it. Because how else, how else do you stay alive? I don't know. We'll, we'll see what the next year holds. I think it will I, go I free, say to play. free to play. I, th I say we'll go free to play. Yeah. I, I don't think it is because no game that they have ever done has gone free to play. I, I don't think, they I think they'd rather shut play. it down. I think they'll shut it down before they'll make it free to play. It's just the way Gearbox is. But Borderlands doesn't need, like, a steady stream of players to make the game enjoyable for everybody else. This game does. If this game is yeah, falling okay, even but, further, it's it's dead in water if I like four hundred player base, two hundred player base. Okay, but when you think about it like this, you said not maybe you, but somebody said, um, 
that it doesn't seem to know what it wants to be. Which I means... said that. Okay, that was you. That okay. But anyways, if they don't know what it wants to be, how do you think they're gonna like know that it needs to go free to play or it doesn't? Like may... they clearly don't have a lot of experience with the whole MOBA genre. So think about it. I, I don't think it's gone free to play. I think it'll just shut down. No way. They first they go free to play, then shut down. If anything, there's no reason All not right. to try it. That's enough on this. Okay, topic. one final point. I know you brought up the single player, and you said yeah, it was not that... funny. I think it's at least at the single player's issue. Single player sucked. It was a tack on that just no, felt no, no. so That's awful. That's what I'm saying. Is the single player? It it was. It didn't offer anything to you know. The single player felt like a chore. At least me. Maybe I know there are some people who enjoyed it, but to me, you know, part of the way you unlocked heroes was by you could do single player missions. You could just play the online portion, unlock heroes, but you could also do the single player missions, to unlock heroes. But every single mission was largely the same, same premise. You're just beating waves and waves of enemies, and there wasn't like an overarching story to kind of. Hang. I mean, there was, but it didn't feel connected. There wasn't something. I, I still think really you're being too generous. It was awful. It was the most obviously, like to me, tacked on thing to yeah. to, to to justify no, a price it was really bad because you needed it like you had to play it and they made it tacked on it, it that's you didn't have about. to play it was easier though that way because you yeah. had two you had there are two ways to unlock heroes but um it wasn't fun and to be honest i was looking forward to playing a co-op shooter mm -hmm. uh, they, there are so few of them uh, that come out now everyone's focused on online play so i found it very disappointing and i said that in the review too but i i'm not gonna say is it awful? Yeah, it, it was awful to me, but I know people did like it for whatever reason. Unless it's well, just they have they have awful opinions. All right, let's, let's move on. That's true. <laughs> I thought this was an interesting thing. Uh, we kind of got off track. We started with Overwatch, but uh, Blizzard has is debating adding social features to their games so that people can log in with Facebook. And I don't think we said this on the. No, they're no. not debating. They're doing it. They're, they're going to do it. That's definite. They're doing okay. it. Yeah, that's, but only that's... for Facebook Live. No, what is Facebook Live? Live? That's Facebook streaming. Facebook Live is exactly. No, it's not. Fa I don't know what Facebook Live is. The way they described it is they have Facebook login is going to be in all of their modern games, so no Diablo 2 or anything, and they're going to make it so that you can stream. Oh, wait, Facebook Live Oppy. Yeah, okay, now I know what you're talking about. I thought it was some sort of service. Okay, anyways, they're going to make use the Oppy so that you can stream directly to your timeline instead of like to Twitch, like so that everybody can see you streaming. You know what I mean? They're I think it's me with Twitch. I think it's kind of a both thing, but I, it's not really clear. I, I've never seen it in action, so. Okay. Why don't they have a system today? Why do they have a system years ago where you log into your Battle.net account and click integrate with Facebook? Hey, your friends XYZ are playing or have Battle.net have Battle.net accounts added to your friends list. League does that, and it's very smart. Why hasn't Blizzard and other companies done this yet? Why hasn't Steam done this yet? A lot of companies like to be uh, self-contained. Yeah, like I'm Steam wants it to be its way. own platform. They don't want to have to, like, rent out their friends list to. But you do not see the huge benefit. Oh, they don't rent out their friends list. They're, oh, they're okay, borrowing but... Facebook's friends list. But the thing is, you have your integration with Facebook, and then you're putting that name on that, or you have your own self-contained platform with millions of people, and then other pay people are forced to integrate with you. Like Steam has the logins where you can log in with your Steam account on like Steam gifts and other places. So they're competing more directly with Facebook than for gaming. It's exclusively for gaming than say like Battle.net might be, but Battle.net's a completely different story because it's uh. And platform exclusive to Blizzard games, so they could add Facebook login at any time. And I think clearly they realized they might have been well, wrong to not login, do it by the fact that they're doing it. But Facebook login doesn't mean you're sharing your name. Well, the way I think it works in League, if I remember correctly, as soon as you log in, it just says, "Hey, all these friends are playing League. Here are their usernames. Add you can add each one individually, or just add none of them at all. It gives it an option to see very quickly what friends are playing League, so you can you can connect with them because like. I might see somebody on League who I haven't talked like I have on my Facebook. I haven't talked to him in years. But hey, he plays League. Let's connect. Like Blizzard and other companies should just do that right away. Because whether we like, I mean, what, we talk Overwatch, but whether we like it or not, these games are social games. I mean, every MMORPG is more fun with other people, and it'd be a cool way to reconnect with old Facebook friends if they play the same game as you. Why hasn't Area done it? Why hasn't you know anyone done it? Well, isn't there a Cultural stigma, maybe not right. cultural. At least, maybe for the gamers. record, Ray, Ray Cole is telling us right now that Battle.net had that feature and they removed it. So. Well, I think it's a bigger issue here. I think you guys are focusing on the wrong issue. People are going to be live streaming to their Facebook feed. That's, yeah. That's, I think that's I think that's a story here. Uh, do you think there's any chance that means competing? Facebook is trying to step on uh, you know Twitch's toes? Yeah. And they're going to start with start with Blizzard. Facebook is a company that wants to be in everything. 
mm-hmm. and they're just they they just put their tentacles out there. I'm not saying that that that's not something that means it's a bad thing, but they, they really want to be part of this industry. I mean, remember when Facebook announced uh, that they would buy Oculus, and everyone raged against it and said, mm-hmm. oh, "I don't want to have to you know log into Facebook to use my Oculus." Uh, that didn't happen, at least not yet, as far as I know. And I, I feel like there's a, definitely a stigma attached to the idea that Facebook's going to be integrated with any gaming platform. Uh, I get that people use it because it streamlines logging in and whatnot, but yeah. there's definitely resistance. Now, I won't use Facebook to log in. I really don't use Facebook uh, that much. But I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are resistant to the idea. And it will this be successful? I don't think Facebook is going to take away viewership from Twitch. I think it, it seems odd to me, but maybe... I see them no chance against Twitch. This is just like, hey, Twitch is, Twitch so is doing this I, experiment. Think, I think this has a different focus. I think it's like uh, when you look at Steam broadcasting, right? It's made mm-hmm. to stream directly to friends rather than like try to stream to a wide audience to the point that you can't even just grab a quick link and share it with people. I think it's going to be the same thing with Facebook. That's a good people point. People use stream, uh, Steam broadcasting? Yeah, to stream to friends and like if I you want to hang out, I've never used play it. Like, used it. Okay, I've used say it. you want to hang out with just a few people and Matt, play have like you used a Jackbox it? party. Have yes, you I have used, used it. it. Okay, I have friends that like right click and go join or request to watch stream for me. I mean, when I'm doing this, I mean, and I do it all the time because they want to. So interesting. That's a good I mean, point. Like, but say you want to have like Jackbox party pack, right? Yeah. You just throw up a quick Steam stream, go into Steam chat. And it's just all right there in front of you. You can play from anywhere. Oddly enough, I even think about that because I was playing Jackbox Party Pack with some uh, Discord friends, and the first thing that came to my head, okay, I guess I'll stream it on Twitch. You know, how else are we supposed to share the, to see the answers? You know, but I didn't even Same think about using it. I didn't even think about it, which is, which is weird because they did have that feature for a while. It just I knew it existed, like, but it just didn't come to my mind. I have a question I for think... you. Did you stream? You streamed on your personal for that, right? What yes. do you mean by that? Okay, my point is a lot of times when I stream. I'll stream on my personal account because I'm actually just, you know, streaming for a few friends to show them something for 10 minutes. Like, I don't want to make it like a, an hour or two hour, like, block. And yeah. uh, I think f- Facebook for that will be amazing. Facebook streaming. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I think it's going to be more like Steam Broadcasting where it's meant to just interact with a few friends at a time rather than it is going to be yeah. like a live Twitch thing. I think it'll do better than a YouTube gaming thing has done. Oh, my. Does anybody, is YouTube gaming still a thing? Like, can yeah. Yes. They 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 signed on a ton of huge YouTubers as exclusive YouTube gaming streamers, and it pays lots of money probably. Yeah, basically, and it's still going. It's it's not like PewDiePie's using it, right? It's not taking off with new people, but it's it's there. What's funny is it's like Amazon paid about a billion dollars. That's a reported number for Twitch, and honestly, like these numbers are way bigger than my pay grade, obviously, right? But it seems like a billion dollars for Twitch is a pretty good deal because it's a huge platform, it's growing, and like you literally capture such a big audience. And actually, if you look at the data, there's more like gaming content watched on Twitch than YouTube. The only part where YouTube wins on gaming content is trailers. If you take away game trailers, there's more minutes spent like on, on gaming content on Twitch than all of YouTube, and YouTube is massive. So it's crazy that Google decided like, hey, wait a minute, we don't need Twitch. We can make our own YouTube gaming and everyone's gonna use that. Didn't work. Bad idea. I, I don't know. I think part of the problem with it too is that YouTube made it YouTube gaming. It's not just YouTube streaming. It's YouTube gaming. It's like they they have a huge market that is outside of gaming, right? Mm-hmm. For YouTubers, and they decided to focus in on gaming. It's true. Yeah. I'm sure people would love to stream just their room. That's a popular thing. You just watch someone's room. I'm sure that stuff happens in China. In fact, I think we saw that. No. Uh, I think you bring up a good point, but uh, I don't know. Will we all use Facebook to stream? I'm not going to. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not thinking going. about it. <laughs> but I mean, somebody is. Otherwise, they wouldn't. Uh, we'll see. Now, one thing also I wanted to bring up before we leave Blizzard behind altogether is that Blizzard is considering cross-platform play. Uh, but don't get your hopes up. It's not going to involve the PC. It's just going to be between the PS4 and the Xbox One. Uh, uh, that does make sense to me. Omar, I know for some reason you support the idea of cross-platform play between consoles and PC and FPS games, which I don't understand. But, here's what uh, I support. Before you, before, you, before you tell me what I support, here's what I support. An opt-in, system. An opt-in system. Let's say I'm a, I'm a PS4 gamer. I got Overwatch. Hey, on the options, check. Queue with PC players as well. 
By default, that could be off. Why not give me that option to play with my friends on PC? Oh, Who just wants to wreck people. Who loses? When they're on your team, you start losing. That's for sure. But, but it's messed up on MMR and rating anyway, so it's supposed to be balanced with the with the with their own matchmaking algorithm. So it just seems like a win-win if you allow them to match up with PC gamers too. It's been proven that console gamers do worse in first-person shooters when put up against people that use mouse and keyboard. It's been proven. You know, I 100% I believe it, but give them the option because most people are playing for fun. They're not playing No, for, like... I think most people are going to be frustrated because they won't know who's PC, who's console, and they'll just be frustrated. It's, a, it's just they a frustration. They start blaming point. people uh, I... who and say, oh, you console pleb, you should get out of my match. I still can't remember what game it is for the life of me, but I did play a game where I learned how to tell the difference between console and PC players, and I would intentionally go was for the it, console uh, players. Final Fantasy XIV? Because I could differentiate no, them. No, no, it was easy. a shooter. Take them right out of the group. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a shooter. I can't remember. But I'm surprised more games uh, don't have cross-platform play between the consoles. Is that something to do with Sony and Microsoft just wanting to keep to Microsoft. themselves? Microsoft. It was Microsoft. They just recently opened up the ability to like really do cross-platform. Just recently, outside of like first-party titles, which have had right. like the Windows 7 and Xbox 360, and now the Windows 10 and Xbox One. But they just now opened it up, and they will not let like Rocket League, PS4, and Xbox One players play together. So, uh, also on Overwatch Blizzard, they actually they're gonna, they're gonna somebody mentioned in the chat. Basil Mark mentioned they said um. They're going to balance PC version of Overwatch and console version differently, which is interesting because I guess they're really... So then you definitely can't have cross-platform play if they're going to have different like, stats and balance issues. Well, that it makes sense. make sense to me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it makes sense to me because like the reaction time between turning with a mouse and everything and turning with a joystick is going to be different. So you're going to have to balance it differently based on the way people move. All right. I have a, I'm going to take this to an actual MRPG because uh, Matt wrote about this earlier. My.com is bringing a game called Revelation online to the West. And after I saw this, like, you can put the announcer trailer on, but it doesn't really do the game justice. There's uh, another video out there already. The game looks so much like Blade and Soul. It's funny. Like, is it a Chinese game? You know, maybe, maybe, I'm all... is, is this Korean or Chinese? Oh. Uh... Uh, NetEase. NetEase is Chinese. Chinese. Yes, it's Chinese. Yeah. Right, when you know it's Chinese, you instantly think, like, all right, who'd they rip off next? All right. <laughs> Not to be racist, but, like, that's, like, what comes to mind because. But NetEase is a reputable company. They're a big company. They're the second biggest game developer in China. Oh, this is a nice lolly in this uh, trailer you're linked. Oh, of course. If you look at the screenshots on your right, I think the character models, the first, I saw the, saw this months ago. It, I instantly thought of Blade and Soul. Uh, hey, look at the gameplay video I sent you. So in the gameplay video, you can see how similar it is. Like, it's so absurdly similar to Revelation. It's a video from Stepara showing some actual gameplay in the dungeon. And just from the combat and the way it looks, like I've seen more videos too because I was curious about it. It's such like inspired by Blade and Soul, which it's not bad to you know no. take those elements because people love the combat <laughs> in Blade and Soul. I don't know about you guys, but I think it looks pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, it looks it good. Does. It does look fun. And I'm hoping it has a better end game than I hear Blade and Soul did. Yeah. I mean, if it does, it it could do pretty well. I mean, that's what people were looking for: better end game. Blade and Soul is doing really well in China too, which is why I think a company like NetEase is like, wait a minute, we gotta we gotta get in on this and made their own knockoff. I think and, published by Tencent there. And uh, I like that my.com picked it up because I mean I know people have qualms with Skyforge and everything, but so far they seem to be a pretty good publisher in terms of business model and support. Yeah. yeah I like my.com, mainly because like they just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. They're actually pretty huge though. They're like one of Russia's oh, yeah. biggest portal game port like, uh, like, uh, uh, portals. I like their Yahoo over there. They have a search engine. They do uh, they do a lot. I just want World of Speed already. Damn it. <laughs> so when is this coming out? What was the? Is there was there a release date? This fall, apparently. All right, that's good. So it's clearly already available in China if you want to, wanted to play it because Step Hour did record this on their servers. And uh, I mean, more more choices are always good, but it just it's so silly that they just copied Blade and Soul. Well, we don't know. Oh, I know. Look at the look at it. Look at the video. Okay, ah! graphics are one thing, though. Gameplay. The, Actually, the, the it's top... funny. Uh, the attacks, I'm watching towards the end of it, and I instantly, anytime I see a rectangular bar attack, now, I just think Wildstar. Wildstar you're running. Right. Your character is running. I don't see it as a, I didn't, I didn't get Blade and Soul 
pressure myself. Blade and Soul, when I played, uh, Blade and Soul's combat, at least as the assassin. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't strike I, me. I as didn't move as much as this character's moving. Now, of course, classes are different and all that, but Blade and Soul to me was more like a fighting game where it's all about chaining the right combos. This seems much more like a Skyforge, where it's more fluid action combat. Just run around and smash buttons. No, I, I don't see Skyforge either, to be honest. I just see a random Asian MMORPG. Like, I don't think it necessarily I, copied I, well, anything. Yeah. I haven't played it yet. I'm getting ganked over here. I haven't played it yet, but it's giving me a Blade and Soul vibe. We need to shoot here. I think, I think you just have Blade and Soul on the mind. So you just... I, yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Hey, I'm okay with that, as long as it's not Maple Story. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Maple Story. Uh, Classic. I, I cannot be the only one that thinks, please, somebody... No, I, no, I don't think anyone but you sees it. I think <laughs> everyone's going to see it. I don't know. One guy. One guy. All right. One guy. I believe him. He's, he's, he's the, he's the go-to. <laughs> it's... All right, it's now I'm not going to dismiss it. It could end up being straight up copy pasta, but we'll find out. Can't really judge. Myself. Yeah, I can't. I, I haven't played it yet. I but. just, uh, I just don't think it looks like it. I think it, uh, I think it does look closer to Terra. Thank you. Radical sees it. I we, we shall find out. Oh yeah, uh, more games always better. It, it is interesting to see my.com just kind of pushing their these games in the West because they did kind of come out of nowhere with, with Skyforge really. I mean, they, they, they they're the company that owned Allotch, I believe too. But to just come out of nowhere, it's good stuff. Let me look that up. Well, speaking of new games, guys, there's a new Kickstarter. Uh... Oh, my favorite! Actually, we, you know what? We were supposed to make a like uh, a shitty Kickstarter of the week, and I don't know if anyone has been browsing, but. Well, here's the one. Something. This one's not terribly you. shitty, but. Uh, Let's see. It is. It's still. It's pretty. It's not shitty, but it's still slightly scummy. So we all know Fable so Studio got the, the studio behind Fable got shut down. Yes. And they're like, oh, yeah. all right, our huge project failed, but we kind of want some money. So let's, uh, let's spin a Hearthstone clone, slap fortune on it, and call it a day. And so even though we're a big studio with 100 people, or were, uh, let's just go to the Kickstarter for some extra money. Okay, I don't think they're a big studio anymore. Aaron. Here's what doesn't make sense to me. Okay, right? They shut down Lionhead. Yeah. They ended the Fable franchise. Why the fuck do they have it? Like, how do they have the license? Oh, they, they the approached license. Microsoft. Yes. Microsoft said you can have it. Oh, because Microsoft doesn't want it, right? Well, it Microsoft's going to keep the license to Fable overall, but they're, like, sub-licensing the right to yeah, this card game. To happen, yeah. yeah. Okay, this is kind of cool. Immediate alpha access for backers of 100 pounds or ab and above, so the game exists. Like, it works. The game's done. The game's actually done. What? They just, Why are they kickstarting it? No, it's not done. It's an alpha. It, it, I, I don't want to read immediate alpha access and then have someone tell me it's done. No, no, no. no. I, I've read before. It's in, they're, ready, they're ready to ship to close beta. They, what they need the money for is uh, to add six extra heroes or something. What? It's just marketing. Okay. Okay. We, uh, I just want to bring up one quick point. We always talk about Kickstarter projects not being able to show uh, like enough gameplay to warrant doing money. But now this one is... From what you've just told us, and I haven't had a chance to read through it, but is that this is pretty much a done game. Yeah. So, like, where do we draw the line, then? <laughs> I mean, not enough, you can't much, have you know? nothing, and you can't just be done. Yeah. Anywhere <laughs> in the middle I is just, okay. I just found what has got to be the dumbest thing I have ever seen. I just searched MMORPG real quick, and I got chatbot MMORPG. Before before we jump to another Kickstarter, let's stay on this for a moment. Yeah, because, yeah. Like, at least, like, when I know that if I fund this game, I'm getting something. Like, even if this game wasn't done yet, and like I know these guys are experienced game devs, I mean, I feel better giving money to people that have done this before, you know, like yeah. in that regard. But as Altai pointed out, the game is not, the, it's an alpha, but like, it's already playable. Like, it just seems so silly to do this. Uh, asking, like, yeah, this is basically so a pre order. Like, and, and it's pretty obvious yes. if you read about it. Uh, the studio fine, is it. legit. They're open about it. Yeah, they're open. Like, it's basically a pre order. And that's fine. Yeah, at so least we're being is, honest, right? Honesty is yeah. what counts. And you know what you're getting when this comes out. Like, right away, you're going to be able to play if you put that much money down. What's crazy, there's a 5,000 uh, pound like, well, tier of a level. So the... Oh, like, my one issue with this is... It does, I don't think it innovates as much as like uh, that RuneScape game did. What was it called? RuneScape Chronicle? Chronicle. Chronicle. RuneScape Legends. See, that, Legends. Solid game. It was at least a little different than you know Hearthstone. This one is basically the same setup as Hearthstone. The only different thing here is each card has a good and bad version. So the whole fable thing is about like choosing your alignment, right? Right. So they're trying to like kind of <laughs> go with that idea. I, at least I, it's I think something. <laughs> I think and what the, you the have to remember actual cards. I think what you have to remember though is also that uh, Hearthstone itself is just 
a stripped down version of Magic. Yeah, it feels very what basic. What card game is it? And also, like, let's not theme Hearthstone. The Pokemon all, like, card, card game. Hearthstone Actually, is not like super innovative either, by the way. It just it's just a very polished game. I mean, we all say, oh, it's just a Hearthstone clone. It's not a Hearthstone. I mean, Hearthstone was not the first card game. Even close to it. No, no, no. But, but, but they're clearly taking their inspiration from Hearthstone. This, 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 this game. Wait, you have miniatures, though. It kind of looks a little different. Okay, guys. I did find the shittiest Kickstarter of the week, though. All right, all right let's right. find it, boys. Which one, which one do I click here? The second one. The second, the second one? one? All right. Read it. Okay, so you can pay 50 euros, right? And you don't even get the game. You get whoa, whoa. an SG XXL poster. What's with the name? <laughs> Subliminal Genocide? State the obvious. What? Those are the Obamas. <laughs> oh my god. I like this, though. Why do you think your game will be a revolution? Because of many things. First, dimensions. A dimension can be an instance or a map. It can also be fantasy, apocalyptic, sci-fi, etc. Secondly, the real life, main dimension, will contain interactive mini games, which is a revolution if you combine the two points above. This seems like a troll, but the fact that he lists his risks and challenges like as something almost serious makes me think it's not. It just sounds like a, just another guy trying to get some money on Kickstarter is what it seems like. I like, I like his main challenges. He has to learn how to make games. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a pretty big. <laughs> I like how open he is, though, on his uh, his about the creator. I'm a 26 year old junior investor banker, but I've always been a gamer. Thus, I love to create my own RPG. There's a lot, a lot of parallels there between investment banking and uh, yeah, MRPG and making an MMORPG. I, 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 I can see, I can see where he's coming from. You, you can respect it. It just Kickstarter. So, but we need, we need a couple of examples of good Kickstarter campaigns. People that you know uh, are using the perfect. platform to its fullest. Again, I have nothing shards against the platform. Shards Yo. Online is coming out here. That's that's. Yo, heads up, before we move on to Shards Online, what kind of self-respecting investment banker needs to beg the internet for five thousand dollars? He's a junior investment banker. Oh. All right, come on. He just he just got out of college, probably. But here's the Shards Online Kickstarter. So this is actually a, probably a better example of a Kickstarter page. Let's take a look at it. Wait, they're already on here. This is the, this is the first one though, maybe. Oh, I know. So they did it right because they got money. Yeah, this is the yeah. They raised money. Aren't they coming? Oh, they, they're going on Greenlight. We Steam. should point out, see. yeah, Shards Online is going on a Steam Greenlight, or it's already there. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited for Shards Online. Yeah. Uh, or didn't you have a chance to play it? Yeah. If you look at the Shards Online uh, page <laughs> on Steam, I'm gonna link it right now. And then uh, I just want to say that I had to, I had an interview with uh, Derek Brinkman, the guy that's at the head of Citadel Studios, and he's a pretty mm -hmm. cool guy. So, cool game, cool people, and, and they're getting it. They're getting her done. You know, it's not just they made it. They make it happen, and it's, it interests me a lot because it it draws a lot of inspiration from Ultima Online. If you look at the the trailer, it even says from the lead developers of Ultima Online. So clearly, the inspiration is there. There's a lot of cool things going for. Her. I know Altai had some issues oh. with server rule sets, and I do want to discuss that a little bit because yeah. So. That's mm. actually what I wanted to bring up. The server rule sets and a lot of the mods that people are already making when they barely have any access to anything is like astounding. Like people have like basically recreated old mud rule sets with hardcore death penalties and permadeath and all stuff like that. And but like Alta, cool. you can't have server rule sets because all right, I knew this uh... was coming. I knew this and was then... coming. But here's the issue. Just one last oh, go ahead, go one ahead. last thing. Yeah. Okay, so they also have this one thing where you die and you get injuries that are permanent when you die. I thought that was pretty cool. Somebody's server did that. Ooh. But remember, keep in mind, this game is being designed from the start, from literally before they had any anything, right? With this yeah. kind of sharding uh, principle. In mind, it's yes. not like we're going to make a game and then after the fact, oops, you know, just divide it. Like this this is a plan from, from, from day one. Right, right, that's true. And that, so that's, that's, you know, that my rule does not apply to that. This, this, this is actually <laughs> fine. This is actually great. And oh. I think they don't want mass, they don't, I don't think they expect one shard to have like 10,000 players. That's not their goal. No, they want, very, they want unique D&D &D well, style experiences. Kind of like Neverwinter, maybe. Like the original one with those custom game maker stuff. Neverwinter nice and stuff. They, yeah. They might expect their own shard because they're doing their own like, well, not shard, cluster. They're doing their own cluster to um, have like a place for all the newbies to drop in and just have like a rule set that makes sense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for people not familiar with Shards Online, it's it's a game where 
the game takes place over many ser uh, shard clusters, server clusters, and they each have different rule sets. Some of them are official, some are player made. And within a cluster rule set, you can switch between servers, but you can't bring your character from one rule set to another rule set. And the actual number of players per uh, per server in the game is going to be pretty low. I think about 64 is the current limit. So it's not like there it's not truly massive, but it's it's it has so much customization that it, it could be something really cool. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, th I do wish it success. I will play this game. I will try this game. Of yeah. the Western uh, early access games right now, like and what I mean by that is Camelot Unchained, uh, Shroud of the Avatar, and this, Shards Online. Shards Online is the one I'm mo most interested in. And th that's interesting because I, I would say that's probably the most niche of the ones you mentioned. Probably, yeah. But then again, it's the game as is already playable. And fun fact, we'll be, we'll be giving away some uh, seven-day uh, alpha keys for Shards Online relatively soon, so keep your eyes peeled for mmos.com slash giveaways. Uh, Skill parts, execution will be a little iffy. Execution is always iffy. When you have ideas like that really go against the grain, whether you know, no matter what game it is and how, because it's nowadays it seems pretty easy to design a cookie cutter MMORPG. We've seen lots of cookie cutter games, so it's all about execution in a game like this. It just it has to be done well, and we'll see when the game gets uh, closer to launch. We should uh, okay, so we'll transition out. I think we gave Shards Online a good deal there. Good there shake. is a a good shake. There is a new game. There is a game coming out that will challenge some titans. Uh, like Overwatch, a uh, Lawbreaker's first public alpha test will begin in the middle of this month. Um, do you think this is really going to challenge Overwatch? Gumby, no, do you no. think this is going to challenge Overwatch? It's not going to challenge Overwatch, but it's going to have its own niche. I, I really do think that. All right, let's make a bet. How many people think you're... Uh, I, I just, I'm week, just trying launch to launch generate week. discussion here. Launch week. <laughs> Okay, I think it's way off. too early for that. They're doing their first public alpha test, man. It's going to be like months before it even comes out. It's way yeah. too early for that. I, I honestly think they're making a mistake by waiting. Because I think now, the more people get ingrained with Overwatch, the less likely they're going to play uh, uh, like a, a more indie Overwatch. That makes it's, sense. Not, it's not the same kind it's of not game, indie. It's it not indie. It's not indie. It's not indie at all. I, don't know. I mean, compared to Blizzard, it's in, everything's indie. <laughs> Except EA, maybe. <laughs> Okay, that's not fair though. <laughs> <laughs> that logic. Okay, but I, I I think it's gonna create its own niche, and I I, I really do think you guys are uh, being a little hard on it with that. I mean, I mean it's, it's it's buy to play, so I think it will it will make its money, and I think it's smart that they go and buy to play to just so they can be successful, rather than just languishing. I mean, like I see it coming out six months down the line at the soonest. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that expecting everyone playing overwatch right now to still be playing overwatch and not be looking for a similar but different experience is a little naive it is different though i, got, I mean i've seen more videos now i've seen your videos too Matt. It, it's not the same kind of game as overwatch at all so that gives them some differentiation i'm actually pretty excited uh from what i've been told it's more like a unreal tournament mm -hmm. that's correct me if i'm wrong matt yeah and... it, it... I do have an appetite for a game like that, just kind of a quick, fast-paced, team deathmatch stylized game. And I can't think of really anything else that really fits that except for the rework of Unreal Tournament, which the last time we played was <laughs> kind of rudimentary. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm excited to check it out. I hope we can get a key and uh, I try think, it. Uh, I think the best way I can explain it, imagine something, the, what we played, the overcharge mode, imagine something similar to like one flag capture the flag in Unreal Tournament like style with instead of having like weapon loadouts you have characters that's it it's like that interesting that's the best way i can put it i hope there's no uh Mac <laughs> someone just answered i like do multiplayer and i made a video for that uh does it have perks and levels and no. uh layouts no that, not yet that really it fucking sucks and i, I can't hate promise that stuff I cannot promise you it won't, because they were even saying that some things were probably not going to be, like, mm -hmm. set in stone yet, but it doesn't yet. So let's hope. Okay, I'm hopeful. All right, do we know I... what engine this is on, uh, Matt? Uh, I'm pretty sure I read it's Unreal Engine 4. I Don't don't quote me on that. Quoted. <laughs> so we'll see how it does. Uh, I think it'll... Fine. Yeah, like Matt, Matt said, it'll find its niche. It'll do better yeah, than uh, Battleborn. I'll tell you guys that much. <laughs> Are you sure? Battleborn <laughs> sold a lot of copies. People, somebody asked earlier, how many copies Battleborn sell? 
I, uh, we don't know right away, but they had 12,000 concurrent users. We can, uh, I can guess, I think. One second. So they still sold a lot of money. They made a lot of money. 60 bucks a pop. But I think a lot of people, like, I've had people leave comments and tell me, like, they've played Battleborn and, like, Toy Mission and Steam refunded it pretty quickly. Obviously, everyone's experience is different. I'm not, uh, Sean said the game gets better as he played and he enjoyed it. The game but, is, uh, look, to give the final, I gave it a good. Basically give it a good. I right, give it a good. The, the reason why, uh, it's just that it's a, it's a game that the philosophy of that game is that you have to grind and do a lot to really get ahead. So I hated it at first, and then the more I played it, I gradually grew to like it. But it, it has many things not to like about it. I'm sure someone else. The sixty bucks. Would give it a, would being give it a being being upfront right there. Battleborn is sixty bucks, which is also a bit of it's a bit steep. Uh, it, it is. I mean, sixty bucks. It was the standard for a long time, but mm -hmm. considering today's market, it's a bit steep and. If the campaign was better and, and the hero unlocks looked a bit different, it, it would have been a better game. Uh, it's just it's it's playing on something. It's playing on the old mentality, mm -hmm. with lots of of lo unlocks and things that you have to grind for. Like okay. if you don't like any of those heroes when you first start playing, and you need one, and say you know you want you need to unlock a hero to enjoy it. I mean you're gonna fucking refund it. There's nothing. Yeah. Why, why are you gonna sit there and grind to on characters you don't like? That's why I think Overwatch mastered that pretty well. Just give them everything good, at once. Good characters, awesome characters. The, also, uh, it was an unlikable aesthetic. I mean, the uh, the number of yeah. owners on Steam is about yeah. one hundred thirty thousand. Wow! And if each, if each paid sixty, which it did drop, uh, since it's about seven point eight million. But I think it also came out on consoles, so it's not a. They made money there as well. It's not a fair. It's not. This, there is more yeah. than this. This is. These are only owners on, <laughs> on Steam. Okay, what are we talking 140, about? 140,000, right? And now you're down to 1,200 uh, players. So it really is amazing uh, the right. way things. I mean, that's everything, though. Drop off. Are we back on Battleborn? Yeah. Let's, let's go away Let's Battleborn. Battleborn. Let's drop Battleborn, guys. We've been out too long. Sorry. Let's become in Maple Story. <laughs> the next Maple Story? All right. Somebody, uh, we should mention too. This week, uh, Monster on Monster Hunter Online English patch came live. So if you wanted to play the game, you can uh, download the official English, not the official, but like an unofficial English patch. The funny thing is they just patched the game too, so the patch, the, the, the unofficial English patch doesn't even work anymore. So that's of course the issue with running, you know, fan-made patches. You gotta kind of tweak it for every update. I also just want to say I did use it, right? The un, mm -hmm. the unofficial fan-made English patch, if we're calling it that. Um, it doesn't translate enough. It translates like the bare minimum for you to get through like the first few hours, and then it's still kind of difficult. It's like the very bare minimum is translated. Well, it's better than nothing. And I want to take us to an interesting discussion because I just saw this on RMORPG, and I think, I think it's something we all feel. Uh, this guy's asking for an MRPG that doesn't feel like a single-player game. He says he just got done leveling level 30 in Elder Scrolls Online, and he says it feels like a single-player game because he hasn't had to interact with a single other player at all. I feel like this is almost like a fundamental issue with a lot of MRPGs today. They just don't feel multiplayer almost. Like, yeah, you're playing the same game as them, but even when we played Rise of Icarus, you guys realize after the first 15 minutes, we all went our own way immediately, and we just never yeah. grouped again. So my counter question to this is: What MMORPG has existed uh, where you where you didn't where you couldn't successfully play as a single player? You know, it, besides raiding and whatnot. You know, even Ultima Online, you can go into the cave and grind harpies. EverQuest, EverQuest, but the, EverQuest and Ultima both had. But in, 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 in Ultima, Not Ultima Online, EverQuest. Get by the people. No, EverQuest, EverQuest you could not solo. Don't just Past like level 10 difficult. or 20. So, also, yeah. it's very rare. Yeah, it's really it's especially rare. It is definitely rare. Are there any modern MRPs that have a better example of that? Because I, I hate bringing up all these Final old Final Fantasy games. 11 is one. That's also I, quite old. Yes. I want to say EVE Online. Uh, the thing is, it's it's not that you can't play single player. It's that a lot of content, the majority of content in the game is locked if you choose to play single player. You're pretty much really good at doing missions or trade routes. Whatever, and you're, you're pretty much you're at risk. You're, you are almost forced in that game to join a corporation, work with other people. So, so people seem to agree. Everything before like 2005. So you games like everyone's saying EverQuest One and uh, FF11. So these are the games we had experiences with, saying <coughs> that you know you had to group other players. But it is just weird that like even our Rise of Icarus, we literally just did the single player thing immediately. You just well, and yes. even the dungeons were I've like got solo dungeons. Counter to this. Early. I've got a counter Go. to this, right? So you have quests that you can do together with other people. Why do you have to play every single quest with everyone? No, you're right. You, you shouldn't have to do them all that way, too. But it just feels like this guy, for this guy's example, is he got to level 30 without interacting with a single player. And nowadays, almost every game, you get like halfway without even doing one player. Yeah, but what's wrong with that? Everybody treats the 
climb up to the max level is the tutorial. That's what it's referred That's, to as the tutorial. Unfortunately, unfortunately you're correct. It, it just seems like as I think Gummy mentioned this in his uh, his Grumble video about that Chinese game. People are saying up to max level, it's the game gets fun at max level. It's not, you know, that's a whole tutorial until then, which it's is unfortunate. Like, with that mentality, I just don't see why you have to play with other people on the way up to the level cap. Mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a contradictory mentality, is what I'm saying. I remember at least I, I hate to bring this example. It's not an old example, but uh, Echo of Soul from Area Games, right? At least you had one quest. I remember like pretty early on, like level ten or something. You have to interact with another player for the quest, okay? To, to even get past that quest, you get to find another player and do some kind of gem thing with him. So, like, and you both have to cooperate for it. So, it, it forced interaction, which is not necessarily the solution either. But I think you have the games have to be designed at least a little more player interaction, even if like they don't want to party together. Like, have events, have things in the game that require you to pay attention to other players. Because even in EverQuest, not just grouping together, like you could be doing your own business in a dungeon at the beginning of the dungeon, killing things like in Black Burrow. And somebody would just yell, like, train! And that would mean, like, a bunch of monsters are following one guy as he's running away because he's trying to get the, get the F out. And he pulls a ton of monsters while doing it. And you'd have to watch out for that because once that guy leaves the zone, all those enemies don't just instantly run back to where they back to where they spawn. They attack all the players near them. So you could, you could have, like, the rate, all the enemies from late in the dungeon come to the beginning and just kill everybody there because the guy pulled them there. So you have to be, you have to be alert from what other players did. You weren't living in your own bubble. I think the issue, what ruined it, uh, or not, uh, you know, well, like, some people do like it, but I think what, what kind of ruined interaction was the uh, basically linear quest, like with the question mark, exclamation marks, because it's so easy. If you, let's say you start with even four friends like we did. Imagine you have more, like 10, 20. It's so easy to be slightly off in progress, and then, you, you, then you're lost forever because you're always one, two, three quests behind or ahead of someone. That's true. See, that, that breaks it. But if you're in a dungeon and your only goal is to grind for loot and, and experience, Right or progress in a dungeon, it doesn't really matter if they're one level above you, if they're a little much below you. But in a current game, until you get to max level, you're never going to be in the same exact progression spot as anyone else around you. You can be one quest behind, one quest ahead, and it just, yeah. that screws it up so bad. And it feels like free to play games today, especially, are just like go from it's it's like a rail. This quest zone, this quest zone, that quest zone. If you have a primary quest, you have to do them in order too. Yeah. So it does feel very like linear in terms of progression, and if. And you can't play with your friend if you're on different parts of that quest, unless they wait for you. Yeah, like you mentioned EverQuest, and in EverQuest you had dungeons that had a level range. And anyone in the dungeon was basically a potential ally, because it didn't matter if they were a level or two below, because, you know, they could still whack on the same monsters with you. Mm -hmm. And you just don't have that today, because of, because of the quest lines. Didn't, um, or would you agree that Guild Wars 2 leveling, they tried to combine the single-player experience with yes. multiplayer access? It was passive. But at least though. you would enter an area and you would automatically basically party it up with everyone in that area and do the same quest. And while you weren't directly interacting, you weren't say typing and saying, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna CC, it did have it did you, you had a sense of community, like, okay, we're all leveling together, even though it's passive. I, I enjoyed that and I thought that was a good way to try and inject the modern on rails formula with the multiplayer aspect. Right. Whereas in Riders of Icarus, what I did not like a lot when we were trying to quest together, say we're trying we all have to collect one item. Once one of us collects the item, it disappears. Now one person is automatically behind the rest. Yep. And I always thought that was a poor design choice. It, 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 it basically says you don't want to party up when you're leveling. Um, there's also other ways to incentivize, right? Like Black Desert, I guess, you would party with a certain number of people, you get a bonus to experience. No, uh, you get a penalty. You got a penalty? I thought there was a no, bonus. A no, level. it's a penalty because you're killing yeah, things faster. See, I think to do it the opposite way, uh, to provide some type of bonus, you would have more people partying. Uh, or maybe it's well, only designated certain zones, but there are there are ways to do it. And what I'm basically getting at is you can't. There is a game. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name now. That's basically going to emphasize you. Every time you leave town, you have to be in a party. The problem with that is, if the people you normally play with aren't online, now what are you going to do? You only play with those people who are online. What if they quit? Now you're out. Or you got to find new people. So you got to cater to. Unless you want to get a game that's super niche, you got to cater to everyone. Uh, so I'm not sure what the, the answer is there. And I, You did mention Guild Wars 2, and you're right. It did a great job. Uh, not only did you auto-level, uh, auto-group with people around you, but in each zone, the quests weren't really in order, right? Like, you could go do them in your own order. Like, each each of those okay. little mini regional yeah. quests. Yeah, so I think the, the linearity breaks it for a lot of games. Because if you yeah. missed, you cannot get to their quest till you finish the one directly previous. 
So that's an issue gonna, in a lot of games. I'm gonna go ahead and counter that and say that I fucking hated Guild Wars 2 for its questing system. Why? And I literally Why? quit around level 10 because if you party from the very beginning, you have to play every story quest once for every party member. So if you have four party members, you have to play it four times over and they have to individually start the quest. Okay, the party quest, there were fewer and far between. Uh, and no, yeah, the... they were party quests, but only the person that initiated the quest got the credit. I don't remember that don't being remember an issue. When did you try it? it? Like how That's long the ago? story quest. Yeah. I tried it. I don't remember, but it pissed me the fuck off. Wow. Damn, Damn man. You, 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 you sound, yeah, you do sound pissed right there. <laughs> Guild Wars 2 grinds your gears. I wanted to bring up this game uh, before you move too far away because we're talking about party play. There is a game coming out called uh, Saga of Lucinia. Lucinia. Come here, I'm and I'm, that's I'm, the game I'm, I'm trying to think steal of before. What? Can I finish? I'm steal it because somebody just linked me some wonderful... Uh, MOs.com fan art, and I'm all about art, all right? Take a look at that. Show on stream. Somebody drew my perfect world character mm. that I showed on stream. Literally drew it, so I gotta, gotta appreciate the work they put into it, all right? Wow. I just want to apologize to the Saga of Leucemia guys for being that being what overtook their game. <laughs> all right, all right. Now continue with Saga of Leucemia. Sorry about that. I'm it's gonna wait for Sean to get back. Did Sean run off? Yes. Yes. You, you can't see on Skype. I don't, I don't look. I don't look at the webcams on Skype when we're doing this. No, right. no, Metal Snake. He ran away in anger. He ran away in frustration because I, I took it from him to show off some wonderful art. He it's, he got tra no. He transformed into a pillow. All right. It happens. It happens. Look, I'm a man who appreciates art. All right. As as people that watch the stream when I'm when I'm drawing some art on live. I'm the next Bob Ross on art. All right. So. Gotta appreciate it. And uh, ju just to embarrass myself, since you guys keep making fun of it, I did I did play 30 hours of Echo of Soul. Wow, really? Yeah. What did, what did you see in that game? It was just something to do. All right, I mean, with that logic, you can play all the Chinese games too, but like... I did. I played the League of Angels 2 for up to 36 or something. Oh, that's like five minutes in League of Angels level. No, it's not. It's like 12 hours. Really? Yeah, because I remember I played one of those games and I got to like level seventy-five in like ten minutes. It was no, just playing out of zone. It was like twelve hours. I made over eighty dollars of free cash shop currency in the process. All right, Sean's back. Saga. Sean, wait, wait. Yeah. Before we start with Saga, what are you drinking? Uh, it is called New Belgium Heavy Melon. It's a watermelon lime ale. All right. Well, you take that it off sales? with Saga Lucemia. I'm gonna get a beer. That's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it is interesting. I just saw it. It felt like a very appropriate summer drink. <laughs> summer be I beverage. I want to try that. I had this blueberry ale shit that like made me feel like my throat was dry all the time for like a day straight. Okay. Uh, we were talking about party play. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a game coming out called uh, Saga of Lucemia. Lu Lucemia? Lucemia. Uh, basically... The whole premise of the game, what motivates development, was uh, distaste for the modern uh, MMORPG. They basically want it so that every time you leave town, you have to be in a party. If you're not in a party, you're going to die. Uh, so it's interesting. Uh, this was, I believe, on Kickstarter. Uh, no, it was on Indiegogo. Yeah, that. So I thought this was interesting. This is the game that's trying to fill the niche. I do see some issues with it. It seems like unless you supported the game from the beginning, I can't see it really generating a wider audience. Uh, is the game playable today? The game, as no. far as I know, is not playable. Possibly if you're a backer. I am not a backer, so I'm not entirely sure. If, if but I know it's too early in development to uh, to really be able to make a, a judgment. I know there have been a few tests. I linked a video there mm -hmm. uh, where people have played the game. So far, it reminded me of EverQuest. Even aesthetically, it kind of looks like EverQuest. Yeah, I can, I can delve into that. And combat-wise, it reminded me of EverQuest. So it's definitely returning to the roots of the genre. It's not trying to be flashy. It's just really focusing on group content. Go ahead, Matt. Okay, to start, $40. You back it for $40. You get the game when it comes out, right? Other than mm -hmm. subscription, you have to pay a subscription because it's classic in all the ways. And um, it right now, the servers turn on like once a month for a weekend. That's all they do. They make, As they put it, they have people kick a specific bucket once a month, and that's it. I mean, and, is that um, an issue, though, if it's so early? No, it's not an issue. I'm just saying that, yeah. that's that's how they're doing okay. it right now. And it sounds a lot like EverQuest because the developers, all of them, really liked EverQuest. 
and they're basing a lot of it on EverQuest. And you're going to have, like, two to three month raid dungeons. Like, they take months to get through the dungeons. Wow. And what they're going to do is you have to build a caravan, right? You have to have a crafter, a dedicated crafter, that, or more than one dedicated crafter, that can build a caravan and keep it repaired and shit. And you have this entire caravan that's loaded up with supplies, and you have to make sure you have enough supplies because you have to take it all the way with you to the dungeon. And you'll sleep there in the caravan instead of in town, right? And at night when you're all offline and nobody's watching the caravan and defending it, it'll be kind of like, I think they described it like Dungeons and Dragons. It'll be like a dice roll to see if your caravan gets destroyed by monsters. Now, Matt, given that this is an indie game funded on Indiegogo, what are the chances it's actually going to happen? All right. Are the guys behind this they, game, are they game developers? Have they made games before? They, are, yeah. Did it they, aren't, they aren't all game developers right off the bat. The guy, I who, the Tim I Anderson, don't remember. The, 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 the big shot. The big boy. He's, his, oh, shit, what was it? He's a writer, I think. He's, oh, he's the writer. Okay, he's a writer. This, guy, this did, that alone makes me skeptical, otherwise. but of course the ideas sound good. Well, and, here, here's the thing. They're all super passionate, and they were working on it without money before, if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly, I mean, yeah. I, I'd have to... But, I mean, they're all super passionate. I think they'll make it happen one way or another. All right. I mean, I hope it does. I'm oh, always, I, until, it, I, with, with any games, I'm always skeptical until I can play them. I, just, I, I don't know that it's going to come out in a time that it'll make it, like, able to have an audience right i think it'll just stay in the background forever and that could be a thing four thousand dollars by the way so four thousand dollars to make an mrpg is uh is on the cheap well that's kind of what i'm saying they're doing it as a passion project okay passion really project doing. is fine I mean, well, it's just it's, it's gonna take forever but i think it'll happen uh, i'm skeptical on, on the bright side right though if they don't make it there'll be a writer on staff to write an obituary so <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true they, they, they already have a staff writer oh, that was go. good <laughs> I've been dying to say that for like three minutes. <laughs> uh, I just, I just can't take like so many, you know, crowdfunding games seriously. It's, like especially MMORPGs. People say like, oh, there's plenty of successful stories on Kickstarter. Yes, there are, but MMORPGs are a big endeavor. These are, these are complicated beasts to make for whatever reason. I mean, I'm not a developer either, so I can't speak. But from the games I've researched, they, they take a lot of money to make, and big studios fail at making them pretty often. So it's just hard to see indie games on the MMORPG genre succeed, let alone like even create something. Guys, how Everybody sick does this dragon look? Hold up, hold up, hold up, guys. Happened. Look at the stream. What? I don't this have is, this is one ugly looking dragon, boys. Let's take a look at this ugly dragon. Well, if I remember correctly, every single bit of their art is like placeholder, basically. Mm -hmm. All right, see you, Skuma. Sorry about that. There is a... Uh... Who saw that I dragon? Love way, I love the way it moves. Like you saw, it just feet just slides in the ground. It doesn't even take steps. And there's like a Zubat in this cave. <laughs> it's an indie game, okay? You can't. Apparently... No, it's, it's not even that. I think you guys are misunderstanding how early on it is. Uh, was it the Kickstarter in 2014, or am I wrong? I mean, I'm seeing other players. Like it, it's not just like one guy walking around. So I mean, yeah. it, there's got to yeah, be something. Yeah, but it's still on. really early on. That's the thing. I mean, they're they're as they put it, they're being super transparent with their development. That's good. You know. I mean, they're letting you see all the ugly stuff on the way to the stuff that makes you want to play it. All right, I mean, all right. I gotta all say, right. without being, without any reason, just emotionally, I, even though I'm probably not gonna play it, I, I do like it. I like these what? guys. What? You, like 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 you like them? I like. Them. Yeah, you, I like. Yeah. You, 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 you I, I think you like them a lot more if you talk to them, because you're like that. They're so affable all the time. With affability everybody. will always uh, persuade me more than reason. You're an affable person. <laughs> I'm going to show me. Until you show me, I ain't looking at it, all right? I, I give it no credit. I'm going to my it. wallet. Don't get me all wrong. Right. All right. God, but your wallet is always tight, all right? It's hard to yank <laughs> anything out of there. There's nothing in it, right. so it's going to <laughs> Thoughts on Shroud of the Avatar. I was really excited when I first heard about it, which now well, was we years ago. Were, but the issue is they keep selling land. Like, they keep having these land sales and, like, pot sales, castle sales. Does it's that kinda... not remind you of other Kickstarter games? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's kinda, it just comes off of kind of sleazy. I don't know what, like, the deal is. Like, it's like a timeshare scam or something. I don't know. Can we let <laughs> Star Citizen do that, too? Well, let's, before we get into Star Citizen, let's, let's not poke that one with a stick again. But the recent overall reviews for Shroud of the Avatar have been mostly negative. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this game. I, I, I was also excited. And it just feels like 
it's never coming. It feels like vaporware at this point. Now, I don't own it. Well, uh, it can't be vaporware because it exists. That. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm using the term wrong. It feels like it's a. We need a word. We need a word since we have all these early access Pialfa words. We need a word for a game that's always in early access. Just like or some a game that's early access. Or a game oh, that's, that that's too won't... long. Or a game that won't ever like be, go beyond the state it was in in early access. I, I, yeah. I, I need, nominate cause... the word the abyss. No, no. that doesn't That's make any too sense. Too Lovecraft and like wow. horror based. What Lovecraft? is there a term when? What? Yeah, how about this? Yeah. How about this? It's a gymnast, because gymnasts don't have their periods because like they're starved. <laughs> what? I saw like, they Nobody never get, they never go through that. puberty. They never go through Nobody's puberty. Is, is, is it a gymnast game? This is a gymnast right here. Guys, this is a gymnast. Man. This is a Chinese. This is a Chinese anyway, ten, eight-year-old gymnast right here. Oh my okay, god! So it's been, it's been officially decreed. Guys, off of that. Okay, uh, let's ignore the whole Star Citizen-like comparisons for a minute. What I've Go heard ahead. a lot of people hate is the random encounters with card-based battles. <laughs> Wait, what? what? I didn't know. I've that. heard there are random encounters with card-based combat. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's what I've heard. I have not played odd. it, but that's what I've heard. That seems not just odd, that seems insane. That seems like it goes against anything I've ever heard about Shroud of the Avatar. Let's see. That's why I thought it was weird, but you can go through the, like, the reviews the and stuff. playing cards combat system. Okay. Like, go through the reviews. The reviews for this are horribly negative right now. Again, the Shroud of the Avatar was, it was first released on Steam, it looks like, on November 24th, 2014. So was that like... When it was first playable on Steam, so it's been playable for a while, and it's been playable before that. Yeah, and that's when it came on Steam. So they've been act, they've been working on this for a long time, and it just. I tried to, uh, I tried to do a preview of this ages ago, and they refused to let me have a press copy at the time because they were in pre-alpha, and they didn't want to give out press copies during pre-alpha. Guess what? They're still in pre-alpa. I hate <laughs> that like term pre-alpha. <laughs> oh my god, we we actually got some keys for another game, and they're like. It's in like closed pre-alpha. It's not even like regular pre-alpha. It's closed pre-alpha. What pre does that mean? And I mean, ultimately, I don't care about that. This is just funny to me because if they are still going by that rule, they have not given out a single press copy because they're still in pre-alpha. They're, they're a gymnast. They want the press to buy them. They're a gymnast. You're gonna buy. Oh. They're a gymnast. That, that's the official MOS.com term now. They're gymnasts. My thing. My thing was always, <laughs> if you are selling your game, neglecting to give press copies just because of how early it is, is dumb as fuck. Because it's good enough for the consumer to pay for it, but it's not good enough for the press to play it. If you if you're, if you can pay for it and there's a product, it's released as far as I'm concerned. Really? Yeah, you, they, they're saying, they're saying in all caps, this game is an early access pre-alpha. But they're charging money. Alpha. Yes. Okay, so it's really. I mean, DC does the same shit. They put a big warning, but they happily charge you. I think so. That the... warning is liability. That warning is a hundred percent liability. Liability. It's telling for you what? that the game is incomplete, though, so I don't feel bad for people that buy it. Like, if you have buyer's remorse, I mean, it's one. It's like a crowdfunding game. Keep that and in so mind. So they have plausible deniability in case yeah. anyone decides to sue them. No, 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 I don't think you could sue them or anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I think it's more like when DayZ did it, and lots of people bitched about DayZ being in such a poor state. Uh, I think they set the, the standard, and then DayZ decided to put this big warning sign up so that people couldn't, you know, they couldn't complain without, uh, you know, without any type of, I, I can't find the word, but they couldn't complain as much. Uh, I think every other game now has followed suit that's in a similar state. Mm -hmm. So, because if you remember, when DayZ, the standalone first came out, I mean, people were bitching. People, no one was happy because you had the, the mod version. It was just infinitely better, even to this day. Okay, uh, I, I have a I have a little abstract argument to oh, bring please. up. Now it's not oh, this great. bad. It's not this bad yet, but if this if we keep going on this course of let's say Kickstarters that never come out and need to get money, these pre alphas that are in alpha forever, are we is this industry eventually going to invite government regulation, where you have wow. to define terms like retail? Like this is it. This, okay, oh, like, no, it, it, a, it, it needs. Question. There need to be laws surrounding it. Like, there needs to be consumer protection on a legal There scale. ought to be a law. I mean, I don't think there needs to be laws, but I think a lot of bad players, like even Shredded Avatar, is, is going to cause it. Because they're, they're, like, really stretching the... Uh... I'll tell you when there's going to be laws. When esports gets really big, and somehow someone loses some money due to early access or something, some, somehow, what? <laughs> maybe when our generation gets older uh, and, and is running the show... Uh, I, I think you might see something. I think the industry as a whole still needs to get bigger for that to happen. I think we're still a little niche. I think this year is the first time that 
that gaming is truly on an international scale uh, going going forward. Uh, and once esports takes off and more attention is drawn to the industry, yeah, I, I could see it happening. Sure. And just for the record, I don't think it would be a good move if there was government I don't regulation. Think it's a good move either. So we need, I think we need the big platforms like Steam to ward off that regulation by actually being responsible for their green light content, well. for their early access Steam content. Steam doesn't want to be. Well, then Steam, they're gonna Steam. then they're gonna invite the government, and that's gonna make it worse for everyone. Isn't that how it always happens? I guess. We've I mean, learned how Steam is like pretty like we've seen private servers get on Steam green light and stuff, so they're not always hands on and. The reason being, too, Steam is, they don't employ a lot of people considering how big Steam is. Like, no. how many people work at Valve anyway? I bet it's, it's, well, it's going to be less than, I want to say 60. I'm going to go low. No, there's, 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 we know that they're not a big <laughs> studio because they refused. The whole reason they made Greenlight is because they didn't want to employ people just to approve games for Steam. That was the entire point of it. Dave Newell we... likes his cake, right? He doesn't want to share. <laughs> he ain't hiring That's... anyone else. They have, uh, because... as a... 2013, uh, 330 people. So they actually, if you look at revenue awesome. per employee, they're very high because they, they have very few employees for how much business they make. No, it just all goes to Gabe Newell. They get paid like $10 an hour. No, they make a lot of money too. <laughs> I'm no, joking. Let, let's not talk shit about Valve, all right? I mean, I, I like to talk shit, but not, I, like, I like Valve. No, me too. I love Valve. Yeah, yeah except for Greenlight. Except for Half-Life 3 never, is never coming out. No. No. Uh... Yeah, I, I'm curious. Anyone else? Omer, uh, Matt, neither one of you said, do you think it's going to happen? Do you think it's a good thing? I it's don't a think bad it's a thing if it happens, because even though I am probably the most anti-Kickstarter you know, guy on here, in fact, somebody yeah. tweeted me a really funny picture on about Kickstarter, and I got to share it with you guys, but I don't think it, the government should get involved. It's only going to, like, good things will come out of Kickstarter, okay? And they already have. Yeah, of course. So yeah. despite me being negative about Kickstarter, it's just I don't want to put my money there. And if somebody else wants to, God bless you. Know, I, I, I don't think it's my business to tell people where to put their money. People that put their money in, uh, some people, some people that put their money in Shroud the Avatar, maybe having, you know, buyers or Morris. But I think people are also learning as like, people will be more hesitant with their money as they see things stay in perpetual beta, perpetual alpha, perpetual gymnast state. So I think people are going to learn on their own. Here's no. my thing, though. Um, people keep arguing, and I think it's a donation, but people keep arguing over whether it's an inv investment or a donation. And I think that there needs to be some sort of like legal recognition of what exactly it's like defined as Kickstarter donations or investments, whatever it is. Well, there was that uh, case uh, with the card game. I believe it was in Oregon or Washington. Uh, it, was, it wasn't gaming, really, but so someone on Kickstarter promised to make you know a physical card game. And they didn't deliver, and uh, there was a lawsuit, and they lost, and they had to pay back. Wow. Remember that? We that yeah, was yeah, yeah. So, ago. so it wasn't um, at that point. They had to deliver. It the wasn't a donation. No, that that means it's an investment. It's a, it's a basically, it's a sale, and there's a promise of a product. But they are giving you a product with Shard Avatar, just a Dookie product. Maybe. No, no, I understand. But at least in this case, uh, since the Kickstarter had the promised a product, product wasn't delivered, but they had to give the money back. That's what the court said. Now, this is only the state level. This has this only applied to that state. And it, I don't think it's the the case has ever been cited as precedent. I don't think it ever will else. be. Uh, but it has happened. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I thought something more was going to come of that, but nothing yet. Uh, at least that judge ruled that it's not a donation. You're investing in the promise of something, physical or digital. I mean, they're both items. So my my key so. question here, that I'd like an answer from each of you. Um, do the platforms, Steam and Kickstarter, Indiegogo, whatever. Do they have a responsibility though to start uh, policing it better, preemptively yes. to, to to ward off a tidal wave of regulation that would is going to hurt the whole industry way more if they don't. Steam, no. Steam just has an uh, obligation to ensure that there is a product that is downloadable when you purchase it. That is literally their only obligation. But Kickstarter and Indiegogo, they need to like really vet scams. They need to. I mean, some of them are so fucking obvious. And it's like the one that was reported on the MMO that made like $130,000 and they didn't get the money or something like that because they got caught in time. But anyways, it's just like they need to vet it better. But, you, I mean, but when you start vetting like that, you, I mean, one of the interesting things about Kickstarter is anyone can go there and put up like, I'm going to make a pasta salad. Give me some money. I mean, it, it, there's some benefit to having unregulated anyone, free for all. But no, also, there really also, isn't. What? There so, isn't a, an unregulated free for all. Just gives people an excuse to spend money as a joke and then get mad when everybody else does. And it. Yeah, but man, okay. there's some benefit. I didn't say all benefit. <clears throat> okay, look, in an ideal, an ideal world, and I, I want to believe in this one. Uh, 
Uh, it's the responsibility of us as consumers, as people with the money donating. Ultimately, each and every and one of us, each and every single one of us as individuals chooses to donate the money that pops us out or not. It's our own fault for okay, buying into things. And the thing regu- that th- basically what you're saying is that people aren't responsible enough to know that uh, Jimmy Changa, who wants to make a game, but he's a junior investment banker, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't know enough to not donate to him. And I, okay, I think that's, if, that's, and that's if consumers sad. don't even know what they want, and they, uh, the adage is... So, the so that know Big Brother? Want. See, it's, it seems to me like a slippery slope. I think that platforms like Kickstarter and Steam do need to do something because the consequence, as Aaron was saying, is far worse. But I think that ultimately, you know, people choose what to do with their money, and they should retain that freedom. If someone wants to put up a Kickstarter, yeah, but that's fine. They can retain their freedom elsewhere, outside of like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, where it's so easy to trick people. All right, so boys, we're getting. Let's keep this going in the overtime. We're running out of time. This is this is kind of going in circles. I will. Okay, last thing. Will Star Citizen be the first class action? All right, that's it. That's it for the (laughs) podcast. We can discuss it more it in the after show. Thanks after for watching. Show. Say your farewells. Later, <laughs> guys. See ya.